The Italian Renaissance is home to some, if not the most famous paintings, including the creation of Adam, the School of Athens, and even the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. While all of these paintings are inspirational in their own ways, they also represent a deeper meaning into the roles of society in the 16th and 15th centuries. Hello, I'm Chase Harrimans. I'm Bradley Thomas. I'm Ricardo Lucando. And I'm Rebel Cardoso. And I'm Kendall Kimmins. And our research, our research question is, how do symbols from the time Renaissance paintings reflect different roles in society in the 15th and 16th centuries? Well, the answer to this question we came up with was that paintings in Italian Renaissance were able to heighten the position of different people and ideas in the time of the 15th and 16th centuries. To begin with, one role that was heightened during the Renaissance were wealthy patrons. In the Italian Renaissance, wealthy patrons were people who would spend sums of money to get portraits done of them and their family members. These portraits often included expensive jewelry and objects, and the goal of this was to exaggerate their wealth and status to other people. This goal was often accomplished as these portraits were the only way that people could see them and their families, and as such, raise their status. Another example is the case of Isabella de Este, who was another wealthy patron of the arts. Isabella de Este was, got many commissions for multiple portraits of herself through multiple artists, although she eventually turned them down because she did not feel that they represented her wealth and status high, as high enough. Eventually she got this portrait done of herself by Leonardo da Vinci in which she is depicted of that similar to a male ruler through, su through things such as her position, her bright colors, and her accessories such as the crown. This was able to heighten her position as m women of the time often did not have many rights and played a subservient role to men, although she was able to escape this role through these, these portraits done of her. Here in these paintings, as the art in the Renaissance, I will sometimes focus more on the positive aspects of beauty. So, for example, here in the painting of the Dress of Venus by Botticelli, he's using traits like a high forehead and blonde hair to well illustrate Venus because uh, that was what Botticelli at that time perceived as like beauty, and that could have also come from influence from people with high positions. During this time period, um, artists of the Italian era uh, were known as proto-artists. These proto-artists would bring back the Roman ideals of beauty. Um, some of these uh, artists are known as like Donatello and Sandro Botticelli. Many of these artists brought back the idea that beauty reflected uh, a person's status and intelligence during this time period. Not just that, but also things like uh, jewelry and fancy clothes were used to further push and portray the way that they were perceived. Like for example, in this painting, we can see that this lady here uses jewelry and also um, things like this here to further seem of higher status and wealth. Or this lady here who has um, is clearly wearing something of maybe royal uh, fashion and also represents her in a higher manner. Alright, now symbolism of animal in the time response paintings caused a shift in the role of society, specifically domesticated animals. Now obviously they started off wild, but then when we domesticated them, they were used as just a resource. They did work. And then through the facilitation of their symbol how they were symbolized in the Italian Renaissance paintings, we went a hundred years later to then animals being seen as part of our families, our pets, our entertainment. And one of the many examples of paintings that portray this was seen here, this painting by Jocelyn Goss in this portrait. Um, and animals were seen as, he's holding the cat and the dog up close to him, and you can just see people and animals should have trust for each other. They had a relationship for the first time, and this was portrayed here. So animals were seen more as just, they weren't were just a resource, they were part of our family. Another way these roles are elevated is through Christianity. One way, one way this could be seen is where how people how people re relied on Christianity after the Dark Ages, and so they reflected themselves upon on God and His angels. This can be seen here in the coronation of the, of the Virgin, where, where Christ and Jesus 
crowned crown the Virgin Mary as a Queen of Heaven. To add on to this, it was always thought that man was always created in God's image, therefore aligning humanity as a closest species to God. This can be seen here in here in this depiction of the Garden of Eden by Paul, Paul Peter Rubens. Uh, Adam and Eve are depicted with human-like features. So in Renaissance art, like for example here, uh, you could see uh, some symbolisms of masculinity. For example, it's a struggle of Hercules against Antius in this painting by Antonio del Pulaido. Maybe uh, these traits could have been what, well, at the time, I don't know, I mean, it was seen as the influence of masculinity from high positions and maybe from the environment of the time period of the Renaissance. Uh, uh, for us, which is overall, paintings in the Italian Renaissance increase the status along with the attention to different people and ideas during the 15th and 16th century. The way this can apply to now is how the Renaissance impacted the way we see different people and ideas in society, some of which are more important to us now because of the Renaissance. This is our work cited. Thank you for, thank you for listening. All right, Brad Lee, I'm going to start down here and work the way across. Um, first question, reflecting on the work of everyone on your team, which one gave you the best understanding of the Renaissance? I would say Chase, because he really gave a background on why some of these paintings were being created and what influence was being put, being put in some of the paintings. I said that the patrons they influenced what people, what the artists put in those types of paintings. All right, thank you. Ricardo, um, what's an example of an argument from one of your peers' reports that you decided not to use, and then why didn't you use it? Uh, I'm pretty sure with Marco, I think there was a few things about history, about like maybe gods and art that didn't seem right or didn't fit well with what we're talking about, which is more like how it heightened their position rather than gods. Okay. Andrew, uh, what's a way in which your team's resolution makes you think different about the research you conducted? It makes me see how uh, how Christianity only played such a partial, a partial role in their overall ele elevation of other people in society, in Renaissance society. Okay, Marco. Mm -hmm. uh, describe an argument from one of your peers' reports um, that makes you got, that makes you think differently about the conclusion that you came up with. As a group, maybe the argument of Ricardo because it focused on the paintings and also on the artist of the Renaissance. Okay. Yeah. And um, last but not least, if you had another team member, a giant team of six, um, <coughs> what could be the additional thing that they would bring in that would have helped this presentation? I think a political aspect would have been great for our presentation to learn more about different roles that were changed with the paintings in the Italian Renaissance and also how those roles influenced paintings that were created.